What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the chaos. My name is Vlad Tech, and today we're reacting to something that you guys recommended me. Finally, I know it's been a long wait. This one's called "I Am a Pole." Now I can't remember what this is about, so maybe I should look at the description. <laughs> all right, just a hilarious Polish history moment. On a side note, like all of Polish history is, so apparently this is like a brief look into like Polish history, and this is provided by um, one of our resident uh, Polish peoples on the uh, Discord server. So if you guys want to know where I'm getting this information from, you can go ahead and head over to the link in the description to our Discord server, and uh, you can there will be a special channel there called Vlad Reacts Recommendations. You can leave your rec recommendation there with um, you know a brief synopsis. Provide the link. Also, uh, why you think I should react to it and that sort of thing. Also, if you like what you see, you should subscribe and become a member of my cult. All right, with that out of the way, let's look at this. World of Warships. Stop me if this gets complicated, okay? Sure. In Scandinavian folklore, there exists the great legend of the Hall of Warriors, located uh -huh. in the ancient realm of Asgard, where great warriors, the chosen dead taken by the Valkyries, will one day fight side by side with Odin during the time of Ragnarok. Okay, already I'm... <laughs> okay, hang on, back it up. Okay. Don't ask me how I know this, but isn't that from Host Club? Aren't those the twins from Host Club? And what happened to their faces? They fight side by side with Odin during the time of Ragnarok. That is not Odin. It is known as Valhalla. Perhaps you, being a keyboard warrior yourself, mm -hmm. may one day grace these hallowed halls of the slain. And as your eyes wander over the various warriors assembled by the fire... Uh, okay, we have Dova Pig, uh, Fallout Pig, Odin Pig, and uh, Loki Pig. This is going over uh, quite uh, interestingly. Each one reciting their tales of great battles and heroic last stands, your eyes may turn to a shadowy figure in the background. And it may take you some time to realize that this hulking mass that you're looking at is not a man, but an 1800-ton British destroyer, an N-class to be exact. But this destroyer is not British. This one flies the flag of Poland. What the fuck did I just watch? Ten class to be exact. But this destroyer is mm -hmm. not British. This one uh -huh. flies the flag of Poland. Yes, a Polish British destroyer. Gotcha. All right. Its crew gaze down at you with a thousand yard stare. They raise their drinks in honored salute and in unison recount the tale, the legend of the Prion, the Thunderbolt. The Prion? It says Py Pyo Run. That's not how you spell Prion. Our story begins not with the prion, but with, but with an ad break. Don't do that. Don't. With another ship entirely, the Bismarck. Germany's answer to the growing threats of the French and British navies. Bismarck was a testament to Hitler's refusal to acknowledge the Washington Naval Treaty, as well as some other treaties which we don't have time to get into. Okay, um, I have noticed, uh, there's a lot of pigs in here. Um... Well, I mean, that, I mean, his name is Laser Pig, but Jesus Christ. Like, is this like, oh, gosh, there's just so much going on. Like, I can't like I'm being assaulted at all angles. What am I watching exactly? Which limited the size of battleships to about 30,000 tons. And at 50,000 tons, this gigantic warship was one of the largest battleships afloat at the time, and still holds the record as being one of the largest warships ever built. She was designed for speed, her guns for accuracy, and yeah, maybe her actual capabilities have been somewhat overstated by the culture of romanticism that surrounds this time period, but she was still a formidable opponent. Okay, so what we're gathering is that it's a fast boat. There's a lot of fluff in here is really yeah it's really making it quite hard to like figure out where I should break in between to make sure that uh uh i fit within the youtube copyright system but uh yeah um so she has guns and she's like her she, uh, something about her wasn't romanticized i think doesn't that like happen with like literally every single society in history is like they like to romanticize like the stories of like war and stuff like that and like to over exaggerate certain details correct me if i'm wrong but i believe that happens whatever let's anyway with that out of the way let's continue uh, by comparison the n-class was a rather humble destroyer at 1800 tons she was built to correct the mistakes of the previous tribal class of destroyers which had favored guns over torpedoes and as a result she only had three turrets of twin 4.7 inch guns a single four inch anti-air gun four 20 millimeters and two machine guns in other words she was the control z of the military or the navy 
<laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that's pretty impressive for that's a big boat. I'd hate to like to to be in its way, honestly. Because can you imagine like you're sitting on a boat on a, on a, on a destroyer, and then you see that thing coming over the distance, and you know what it's capable of? Like, I think you would just like just shit your pants right there. You, you just. New change of pants! Better wear your brown pants, boys! Brion started life as HMS Nerissa, laid down in Scotland on the River Clyde. After the fall of Poland, she was transferred to the Free Polish Navy before she was even completed, given a Polish crew, a Polish captain whose name I'm not even going to attempt, and a new name. Prion. Okay, Prion, Prion. Okay, so, it's a British design, made in Scotland, and then handed to Poland and given a Polish crew. So it is a British-Scottish-Polish destroyer. Prion, the lightning, or the thunderbolt. Uh, sources differ. The name Prion could equally mean lightning as it could mean thunderbolt. I've got two sources that say thunderbolt and two sources that say lightning. Pre nah. Yeah. Prion is Polish for lightning, and thunderbolt is Prion Prion, I think. I, I, like, I don't know Polish outside of Kurwa, so your guess is as good as mine. And Kurwa? Kurva. Kurva. Horror. We learned something today. Anyway, now normally in British naval tradition, it is considered quite unlucky to rename a ship after she has been laid down. But for the Prion, luck would never be in short supply. That's because superstition is bullshit. She remained based on the River Clyde until she was finally completed in November of 1940. Here she would serve in the Battle of Britain, escorting convoys of smaller ships around the coast. But when she was damaged in an air attack, she was forced to return to the Clyde for repairs, but found that her docks in the nearby town were coming under nightly bombardment by patrol bombers. Sounds like they really wanted this thing dead. <laughs> like the patrol bombers were like, hey, I know what that ship is. We better nuke this thing from orbit, because if we don't, it's gonna come after us. I know we're landlocked, but that thing will find a way. So, the Prion being the Prion, in spite of being heavily damaged and still under repairs, steamed up and down the Clyde, blanketing the skies with a dense layer of flak, risking hits from bombers every second she broke cover. Her heroics earned her the admiration of the locals, and a memorial to her stands to this day. And What? Dedicated to the crew of the Polish ship Urp Prion. Prion. It keeps saying Prion, but that's not what I see here. That is not. Hang on. Piorun. 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 And it means lightning. Lightning. Perfect. The Google Translate robots wouldn't lie to me, would they? You think that would be it, the brave little destroyer facing off against the might of the Luftwaffe, defending a Scottish town Biden. against waves of bombers. But no, sir. Prion wasn't done. Biden. She was hungry for revenge. She wanted blood. She wanted to make her mark against the Germans and remind them that Poland was down, but not out. And in May of 1941, she would get that chance. In the aftermath of the Battle of the Denmark Strait, with the hood having been sunk by the Bismarck... It's a great moment for the German Navy. Hey. No xenophobics in here. Yes, Lindemann. And for the two of us. Not gonna lie, that might have been worth it. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is just amazing. Oh my god, <laughs> that, that, that's almost worth it on its own. And the Prince of Wales heavily damaged, Britain was devastated. Its national pride had been hurt, and it demanded vengeance. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill would send out an order down the chain of command to every battleship, destroyer, cruiser, submarine, and fishing boat with a rifle duct taped to the front that would countermand all other orders. Yeah, because I remember during that period, uh, England was fucked at that point. <laughs> if the Axis went after uh, uh, England hard enough, like, England would have just fallen to the Axis power. So that would have been, like, devastating. So I'm assuming this is where um, Byron, or Prion, I guess. Prion's a... Prion is something different. Prion's a disease. <laughs> I'm assuming uh, Poland is going to come save England, as well as Everyone else in the world coming to save England. Find that bloody ship and sink it! 
He sounded just like that, by the way. At the time, Priam was on escort duty with four other destroyers, heading for the Indian Ocean. Three days in and the order came through, and they were detached from the convoy to join the hunt. Now, the Bismarck might have been a very, very large ship, but Holy in comparison crap. to the entirety of the North Sea, it was, uh... Well, let me put it like this. Mm -hmm. Finding the Bismarck in something the size of the ocean was like trying to find a single drop of coffee in an entire swimming pool filled with fish. And they're just flapping all over the place and you need your caffeine fix, but where the hell has your boyfriend hidden that cup and what kind of prank even is this? Anyway, Bismarck. What? I, I get what you're trying to say, but... What? By now she had four battleships, two battlecruisers, two aircraft carriers, 13 cruisers, and 21 destroyers, along with a mix of numerous aircraft and a cruise ship out hunting for her, in an area of ocean over 220,000 square miles in size. This marks fuck. Because this battle is largely told from the British perspective, much emphasis is placed on the actions of Force H. Uh, Force H was flagged by the battlecruiser Renown, Hood's mm -hmm. sister ship. The crew were anxious to avenge her sunken sister, but she was ordered not to engage. Only the carrier Arc Royale, which did not even have its full complement of aircraft on board, could safely strike at the Bismarck. Famous jamming her rudder and preventing her from maneuvering during a series of low-altitude torpedo runs. It's the entire British Navy and, uh, Pyron, or Prion, however you want to pronounce it. They were all after the Bismarck because, uh, it was a search and destroy mission. And, uh, there was a crew that was, uh, yep, mm-hmm, perfect. This would be the death knell of the Bismarck. And in the morning, the home fleet would arrive and the final battle of the Bismarck would begin. Mm-hmm. However, before this engagement, another lesser documented battle took place. Okay, so we're about to hear about another battle. Battles on battles on battles. This is, a, this is super exciting. Destroyers of the Fourth Fleet were ordered to shadow and harass the ship with torpedo runs throughout the night. Prion paired with the destroyer HMS Maori and spotted the ship just before sunset, making her the Prion. first ship to actively spot the Bismarck during the final battle. After reporting her position and confirming that the Bismarck was indeed unmaneuverable, the Maori moved off to begin her torpedo run. But as the Maori looked behind her to see if the Prion was in position, they saw a horrifying sight. What kind of horrifying sight? Is the Please tell me she's not going to be sunk. Please tell me she's not going to be sunk. And realized that something was deeply, tragically wrong. The Prion was charging directly towards the Bismarck at full speed. Those crazy Polish bastards! Men, are we ready to strike the Bismarck? Yes. Uh, target locked. Locking target. All right. Is the Prion in position? Uh, nope. Why? Where is the... Vroom? Whoa, that's not good. Worried her steering was jammed, Maori broke radio silence and attempted to hail the Prion, but received no response. On board the Bismarck, the crew, now at battle stations, turned their attention to the small flotilla of British destroyers, and were surprised to see one apparently charging them. And this is the greatest plan! <laughs> In disbelief, they watched as the tiny destroyer turned, showing its full broadside to the Bismarck, and with both its signal lights and its wireless, transmitted the message, I am a pole. <laughs> what? Oh, what? <laughs> For freedom! For Poland! <laughs> Just gotta know how this ends. Holy crap. Before it opened fire. For over an hour, the two ships fought mano a mano, pride of the German fleet versus one F single Polish destroyer. The Bismarck Tell completely unable to hit the Prion as it dodged and weaved through fire. Two fucking hours! <laughs> Hang on. With both its signal lights and its wireless, transmitted the message, I am a pole. Okay. <laughs> uh, it still gets me every time. Before it opened fire. Okay, For open fire. For over an hour, the two sh- For over an hour, the Bismarck could not hit it because it just kept bobbing and weaving. <laughs> just, uh... So, let me get this straight. A British-Scottish-Polish battleship transmitted the- just charged- just went complete Leroy Jenkins on you, shouted out, I am a Pole, before opening fire, <laughs> and just pelting you with fucking torpedoes. 
<laughs> oh, this is... Huh. Oh, they're basically using my strategy for Library of Runa. Ships fought mano a mano, pride of the German fleet versus one single Polish destroyer. The Bismarck completely unable to hit the Prion as it dodged and weaved through fire, ignoring the numerous orders to fall back, all while continuing to broadcast, I am a Pole, three salvos for the honor of <laughs> Poland, directly at the Bismarck. Do you re <laughs> uh, you don't need a whole lot of jokes to be made here. I like I've got nothing. <laughs> oh, that just made my day. How much I got <laughs> I would have loved to have been the guy sitting there broadcasting the message I am a pole over and over again. <laughs> God. Oh, he got paid to do that. Just think about that. He got paid to do that. <laughs> Her confused crew trying desperately to keep the tiny ship in view as it fired salvo after salvo. And when I mean the Prion was firing salvos, I mean it was firing all of its guns. The 4.7 inches, the anti-aircraft guns, even the machine guns were firing. There's even tales of all the crew out on deck screaming insults and shooting pistols. Fuck yeah! God damn! Oh, this is... Oh. If this were a D&D &D session, they'd have plus one inspiration right there <laughs> for life. Throwing trash at the Bismarck as they strafed her at one. It just keeps being, hang on. Machine guns were firing. There's even tales of all the crew out on deck screaming insults and shooting pistols, throwing trash at the Bismarck as they strafed her, at one point even bringing musical instruments onto the deck and singing the national anthem of Poland. <laughs> oh god, that would have been amazing to see! Eventually, with the Bismarck's gun throwing great plumes of water over the tiny Prion at a distance of less than 20 meters away, the ship was finally forced to break off its engagement. It would remain in the area defying orders to return to port until its fuel reserves forced it to finally return home. Oh, come on! <laughs> Ah, oh, that was so cool. It would have been even better if they sunk the Bismarck. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, God, I am like... Ah. I'm like hooked. I need to know how this ends. Oh my gosh. After the smoke had cleared, post-analytics of the Bismarck's final battle with the home fleet showed that the Bismarck had hit absolutely nothing. In spite of firing almost every shell she had, the only damage reported was HMS Rodney, who had shattered part of her own mainframe from firing her guns at point-blank range. A major contributor to the Bismarck's sluggish performance had been down to crew morale and exhaustion. The entire crew had been on battle alert for nearly 48 hours, God, that's, ah, uh, that's unfortunate to hear. <laughs> so, after all that, <laughs> no one was hurt. <laughs> A major contributor to the Bismarck's sluggish performance had been down to crew morale and exhaustion. The entire crew had been on battle alert for nearly 48 hours, and consistent night attacks and harassment had led to the crew just simply not being able to focus. After all, exactly how much sleep can you expect to get when you have an angry Polish warship screaming at you, flashing its lights, throwing trash, and singing all night? Prion <laughs> God, I can imagine you're probably not going to get a whole lot of sleep after that. Nope! <laughs> it's like me when I was getting off work at the prison. Like, I was just wanting to just unwind so I would listen to really loud music when I came home. So, sorry, neighbors. <laughs> Prion would remain in service, operating in the Mediterranean, guarding convoys, and even took part in Operation Halbert, the largest convoy attempt to resupply Malta, the invasion of Sicily, and even the Normandy invasion, engaging remnants of the German surface fleet off the coast of Brittany. After the war, she assisted in the decommissioning of German U-boats, before she was returned to the British where she became HMS Noble, and was finally decommissioned in 1955. While in the British retellings of the sinking of the Bismarck, the story of the brave Polish destroyer who took it on single-handed at a time where ships far more powerful than her were afraid to even approach has been assigned to the footnotes of history, its mm -hmm. presence and courage overshadowed by the more interesting British exploits. In Poland, it has lived on in legacy. Nothing can be more interesting as a, Pol as a uh, British, Scottish, Polish battleship charging 
one of Germany's greatest warships while screaming, I am a Pole, and opening every single ounce of firepower on it. Even though they didn't hit anything, <laughs> it would have been far cooler if they did. That's still worth badass points right there. All right, so that was... <laughs> that was I Am a Pole, The Legend of the Pyron. What did I think of it? Uh, that was... That was amazing. Oh my gosh. Just, like, imagining, like, what would be going through my mind if I ever saw something like that. It's just, like... <clears throat> Glorious. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section down below or over on the Discord server, which will be linked in the description. Join the cult by subscribing if you want to see more content like this. And, uh, yeah, pay your tithes down below at the link for Patreon or just send me a one-time offering in the form of a super thanks. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to show me some love down below by hitting the like button. And don't forget to check out the annotations for more videos. Now we'll see you in the next video.